Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World Daily with me, John Jordan. So looking at today, um, what's going on with um, Hashrush, or looking in a bit more detail about its wallet service. So Hashrush game has been in development for um, over two years. Yeah, over two years now. Um, it was looking like it was on the way out a while ago, got new funding um, in 2019 um, and is now um, working hard towards its open beta, which is the 28th of July. So there's a whole bunch of information that's come out around that. I think this is interesting because it kind of this this kind of to me kind of highlights some of the issues that blockchain games have in terms of dealing with the uh, onboarding and making games easy for people who don't know about blockchains to uh, get involved with and get excited about, but also um, kind of keeping the uh, the kind of um, features of why you might be using a blockchain um, anyway, which is which is the ability to kind of move assets and value around the system in a decentralized way. So th those two are, are quite um uh or for the for the last kind of two years or so those two things have been in in um kind of conflict um and not many games have had a good solution around this i'm not saying that hash rush has a good solution around this but i think this this um uh blog post email um kind of i think um highlights a lot of the issues and, and it's good that blockchain game developers are kind of aware um of of this and i guess um you know, as, as ever that the uh how you actually implement um around these things is kind of the key so user, user experience is always key i think uh, but i think this highlights some of the kind of um technical issues so um first thing up there's going to be this rush coin which is an erc 20 token it's the in-game currency it's also a, re a reward token um obviously it's a cryptocurrency so um we expect certain things from a cryptocurrency um but uh, one of the issues at the moment is um, uh, all transactions made, made on a blockchain cost some of the currency and take some time to complete. And that's not always the case. I mean, particularly that is the case for Ethereum, but other blockchains, um, the, the transactions don't necessarily individually require um, payment. But for something like EOS or Tron, you need to stake currency in order to get access to the, um, to, to the bandwidth. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, it doesn't that doesn't matter because Rush is an Ethereum token. Um, so uh, so definitely that means at the moment, if you want to move Rush around between tokens and make transactions, you need to pay in, in Ethereum. Um, the gas prices at the moment uh, are through the roof and not showing any signs of not being through the roof. They're just increasing um, because of the use of DeFi. So at the moment, if you're going to be launching a game on Ethereum using an in-game token, you can't really um, rely on people spending um dollars maybe maybe you know one dollar maybe five dollars depending on what they're doing uh, moving around money um currency so it's, you can't do that and also as they point out it can take um, a few minutes to several hours um the price of gecko goes up goes up up or down all the time um and it is very complicated um we kind of forget often i think people in the blockchain game space the first time you start doing an ethereum transaction you're just like what is going on it um okay so uh, i definitely agree with this this is an unacceptable barrier so what have they done? So they've created um, the Rush network, um, and the key point of this is the Hash Rush Wallet service. Okay, that's kind of functional. It tells us what they are um, thinking about. So they're going to be deploying the Hash Rush Wallet service um, uh, <laughs> to be solving some of these problems. So um, okay, how does it work? So under the hood, it is a, a typical Ethereum wallet and is connected to the game database and the blockchain. This is the important thing. Um, so it's not just a blockchain wallet, it also connects to the game database. Um, so when a player joins the game, they will be given a special game wallet that connects to the Hashrush wallet service, um, which in the way it's set up at the moment can only store Rush. So you can't put any other currency in there. Um, effectively, it is a you know a, a Ethereum-based wallet that can only do one thing. So you can't send your die to it. Um, obviously, when a player joins the game, they are being given a special game wallet that connects to the to the effectively the crypto wallet. They're not being given a crypto wallet up front, but they're being given um, a game wallet that connects to a, a crypto wallet. Um, the game wallet is not connected to the blockchain. So if you want to connect to the blockchain, you have to go through this other um, kind of wallet, the Hashrush wallet service. Um, this means uh, when in game, all rush tan transactions between game wallets are are essentially regular game transactions. So basically centralized game transactions. So if I'm moving uh, rush around um, between my game wallet um, that doesn't touch the blockchain and that can just go through like a centralized um, service like you do, do in any other, any other game. That means it's fast. There's no transaction fees. Um, obviously, 
Um, it means it's not decentralized, which is not kind of one of the it's not what blockchain um, is supposed to be about. But this is a a kind of a a in a sense a a way of dealing with these problems. Uh, but when you're moving around your your rush with this game wallet, um, the hash rush wallet service monitors all the transactions and keeps a regular database. So so the blockchain bit of it looks about what's happening off the blockchain, what's happening around centralized, and it can kind of tell what's going on. So when a player buys or earns rush, the the blockchain bit, the hash rush wallet service will mint the rush coins and store it in the main hash rush wallet and rec and do the kind of recording of, of what's going on there. So so this is the blockchain bit and, and it is um, doing the minting and, and keeping records um, of what's going on. When player wants to withdraw their rush from the game to their own private wallet. So I've got rush in the game, in my game wallet, and I want to take it out to my, say, MetaMask or my... Um, whatever Ethereum uh, wallet I am using, um, the, the hash rush wallet service will verify the amount of rush I've got within the centralized server. Um, and then if all flags are green, if everything um, looks right, it will do the blockchain transaction um, and it will move the rush from the game wallet to the private wallet. Um, and that will obviously involve a transaction that presumably the player will be paying the guest fee on. Um, Oh no, okay, so here we go. So as it's their wallet, they're gonna let the players transfer a rush from their game wallet to the private wallet without playing the gas fee. Um, so pres presumably the developer is paying the gas fee because they are gonna be hitting the Ethereum blockchain. I would imagine that's the case. Um, uh, as we're making sure the system is secure and works properly for the first two weeks or, or something similar, players will not be able to withdraw rush only deposit it from their private wallets into the game. So basically, to start off with, to make sure it's, it's, it's working properly, there's no bugs. Um, you can't you can't take stuff out. Um, that obviously makes sense because um, uh, something like this, um, you're you're kind of adding complexity because you're not storing everything in blockchain wallets to begin with. Um, so if someone works out a way of kind of mining this rush from within the game and generating tons of it, and then immediately pulls it out to their private wallet and then cashes it out for for for, um, for dollars or Bitcoin or something. Um, you don't want to do that because it will make the uh, developer go bankrupt <laughs> and crash the price of Rush. So, um, so there's obviously going to be a, a, a kind of testing kind of system here. Um, okay, so this, now it's going to get a bit more complicated. <laughs> um, so players will be able to buy Rush uh, from the developer as a limited time, um, but eventually um, Rush will be an open ecosystem. Presumably, players will be selling it to each other. You won't be able to get it off the developer. Um, but to provide the players with an easy to understand experience, they've created an intermediate currency, um, not a blockchain, called the Harmenian Credits. No idea why they called it that. Something to do with the game law, I suppose. Okay, so you can buy the Harmenian Harmenium Credits directly from the developer, website or in-game. And then once you have uh, those credits, you'll be able to use that because it's intermediate, intermediate currency to then buy the rush. This, uh, the Harmenian Credits are built into the Hash Rush wallet service. Um, so that's just kind of part of the centralized server. It's not a cryptocurrency. Um, so th this is kind of like um, helping bridge that kind of uh, non-blockchain blockchain, blockchain um, kind of element of having um, centralized uh, processing and not having any gas fee, because obviously we know that the Rush uh, currency is a cryptocurrency. So you're having this um, intermediate currency like you have an intermediate wallet to make to make sure this can all happen frictionlessly um, at the beginning when players don't know anything about blockchain. Um, so this is just going through about um, uh, taking your rush out. Uh, so this is just going through the process. Bup, bup, bup. Um, so yeah. Uh, Okay, so it's saying here that the if you're if you're withdrawing your rush from your hash rush wallet to your external wallet, um, the developer will cover the ETH transaction costs, which is a bit brave because that's expensive at the moment. Um, but players will pay a fee in rush, so I guess probably then um, they can set the price in rush. Um, so they're burning that rush, um, which actually means it's the value might be, will be going up. Um, but uh, interesting to see how that plays out. Okay, benefits of the system. So, uh, first benefit is uh, you can you're using Rush, which is a cryptocurrency, without paying gas fees or waiting for transactions. Um, you can exchange your hard currency 
I guess they mean fiat, do they? Um, for these credits um, and get your rush out and you can withdraw, deposit and withdraw your rush if you're buying rush from uh, outside the system um, in a insecure and, and user way. It's in the beta at the moment. Um, this service is not feature complete. So you'll be able to deposit rush and use rush, but you can't withdraw rush. Um, and there's these other things. So there will be a uh, transaction batching. So that just means that um, if you're looking to withdraw your rush, um, those batches, those those transactions will be batched up together. So the gas fees reduced. Uh, that kind of makes sense. There'll be a gas station. Um, allowing players to transfer their rush to from the private wallet into the game um, for free. Um, you'll be able to, oh, be interesting, you'll be able to trade ETH to rush in-game um, and pay the fees in in, in rush. Um, so that's if people have got ETH generally, that kind of makes sense. So they're going to effectively buy their, their rush with their ETH. Um, and then phase, lots of phases, uh, phase 1.5, um, you'll be able to go the other way from rush to ETH um, and then phase six, which is, I imagine, talking months, um, you'll see a P2P, P2P marketplace. So you've had to sell and uh, you've had to trade your in-game items for rush. So the whole point is rush is the in-game currency um, and, and over time um, it will become a, a, you know, it will become a open cryptocurrency. Um, uh, but at the beginning, particularly, there's, there's going to be these kind of, uh, kind of restrictions involved. Once these phases are complete, we'll begin on Rush Network second stage, which will include tokenization of game assets. Um, so there we go. So quite a lot to pick out there. I do think um, it does show that these things are complicated to do, and you have to um, think uh, quite closely about how you're building systems. Uh, and almost this is like scaffolding, particularly because it's in a beta game as well. So they're building these kind of this more complicated system, these, these intermediary tokens, um, because they need to one, work out technically that the system is working and secure, and two, they also they have to think about then how, how players are going to start um, when they start creating value, when they start getting this rush token in the game, what do they start doing with it? Obviously, what you want is you want people to, the majority of that rush to stay within the system and be used for buying um, things in the system. The point of having a blockchain is that people, if they want to, can transfer it out, but you don't want everyone to be transferring it out all the time. Um, and that's kind of why it's quite difficult, because I think when, as soon as you have a, a, a internal currency you don't want the price to go down a lot because obviously that's people feel bad. And also you don't want the price to go up a lot because then people don't, don't want to spend it. They want to keep it. So if kind of find this balance is, is actually a very difficult thing. And I don't think any blockchain games have operated for long enough to be able to kind of prove they can do that. And over time, you have to, I imagine, um, the developer will have to do things um, that will help keep something like that in balance. Um, maybe uh, often, you know, in, in, a, in a big... Uh, on world uh, universe people create the, what they call um, sinks so when people over time build up uh, a lot of this currency if you've been playing for a lot or spending a lot of money and buying a lot of currency um, you don't want to have currency sitting around there you want people to be spending that on very expensive items um, that kind of use that up and keep the money flowing out so we wait to see um, I'm quite looking forward to, to hash rush um, open beta on the 28th of um, July obviously as with all these um, games the first uh, you know the f the first, the, the first kind of uh, open beta is just the start of the process. There'll be, you know, clearly for just on the on the wallet side, um, months and months and months of development and seeing what happens. So, um, don't expect to be uh, this game to be complete anytime soon. Um, but that's kind of the fun of blockchain games because people, everyone's trying to work out how to how to um, kind of meet the audience requirements and meet the technical needs and and also build a good game. So, so quite a complex scenario. Thanks for watching the video. This is uh, Blockchain Gaming World Daily, um, where we are looking at what's going on in the world of blockchain games. If you're interested in that, please do subscribe. We're pretty active, um, digging into what's going on, and hopefully doing videos that are informative and educational. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching this one, and hope to see you again soon.